Boom, back again. All right, well, I just watched a metamorph video. It got me thinking again about these words we use and such, like pessimist. Uh, you know, his video was kind of dark. It was a lament, sad, sacky, um, and uh, depressive. You know, people use that kind of rhetoric because somebody is um, paying attention to a part of the movie, a part of the story that's uh, dark and sad and lamentable. Uh, you often see that in a movie. You know, there'll be parts of the movie that are fun and the, oh, the hero and the fighting and the blah, blah, blah. And then there'll be the part where, you know, oh, I don't know. Yeah, like in uh, that Mel Gibson one with all the sword fighting and such. Uh, freedom, you know, whatever. Um, you know, the, the girl, the wife gets killed and uh, so you could just run that part in your head and just run that that idea, that theme, and the, the glow of that, the darkness of it, the bleakness of it. Uh, and yes, okay, so somebody's going to say, well, you're not seeing the whole movie. <laughs> and well, actually, the rest of the movie kind of sucks too. Uh, he has a lot of, you know, mayhem, betrayal, and you have this little moment you know this little this little moment of um, you know chasing some tail, a little French tail, I think, and uh, yeah, that makes it all okay, <laughs> and that's sort of how we work, and that's how we function, and it is sort of bullshit. Um, so anyway, but but getting back to words and labels and shit. So that stupid um, inspired I am, um, you know, is fulfilling her. Uh, you know, she she is the definition of uh, retard, or even skanky cunt, but she's just being a bitch. Um, you know, playing these word games all the time, and that's the game they play. So now, you know, it's bad enough when people mislabel you, but now they want to unlabel you. <laughs> you know, they don't want to, they don't want to allow you to have access to a, a description. And so an antinatalist can only be one kind of antinatalist now. You know, they can only be a, yes, antinatalism until population is stabilized. Whatever that might mean. <laughs> yeah, and if you're anything else, if you believe in anything else, if you believe in reducing population, oh, you're not an antinatalist, you're something else. Um, you know, it's just bullshit. Uh, you can be against procreation, pregnancy, uh, perpetuation, birthing, um, to any level, and be described as anti-birthing. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's just it's just it's, it's a means to an end, and you can be achieving different ends through the means. So you're still qualifiable. Uh, you know, you can be different kinds of doctor. You're still a doctor. You know, just bullshit. Um, but then she threw in the, you know, she did all this so she could find an excuse to once again throw the nihilism word. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they're either calling us God, religious uh, dogmatists, or they're calling us nihilists. I mean, it's just so preposterously inane. You care too much, you feel too much, you feel too little, you... I mean, <laughs> it's just... It's just any kind of argument they'll throw at this, because they don't have a real argument. So they just keep throwing whatever they can, you know, scrape together on the, off the counter. And they give it a chuck. And say, let's see if this mush will stick. And, uh, yeah, it's just such bullshit. Uh, nihilism is just nutty. It doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> you know, uh, all does it matter? Oh, please. Uh, you know, it's just so stupid. It's futile and it all doesn't matter. Well, let's live it out anyway. I don't even know where, what's the conclusion. Um, but the not doesn't matter part just doesn't go anywhere for me. You can't make it not matter rationally in my opinion. There's no way to do that. You have the evidence of it. We experience this shit. You just can't say it doesn't matter whether I feel good or I feel like shit. It, it matters. It's just stupid to say it doesn't make a difference. Uh, as a value equation, which I sort of bends us back to whatever his name was, that brother guy, 
who I didn't block, but I deleted his comments and I pretty much don't have much to do with him. I mean, I make a 30 minute video talking about a ton of shit, asking some direct questions. And he makes this short, trite, stupid response, basically saying it's illogical to want to fix a problem any way but he says so. If you're not fixing it his way, you're not fixing the problem. You're not allowed to fix it in any other way, with the way I say. I don't know, or something like that. Like somehow you have to dispose of all practical considerations and perform um, miracles of magic. Well, anyway, I don't even want to get into it, but it's just a stupid argument anyway. Um, if there was something going on and it was your job to stop it, you'd have to come up with strategies to stop it. And uh, I see one of the first sensible strategies is to talk to all the things involved in the problem and say, look, this is the fucking problem. Uh, let's fix it. You know, let's do it the easy way. And uh, yeah, if they don't play along, well, then you got to start doing it the hard way. Uh, but uh, it's just stupid, I, you know. That's it. That also came up in the insipid I am's video. Again, with this griping about the fact that, well, what's the end game? What's the plan? How is he going to do it? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you have to detail uh, what's going to happen. You know, when you got uh, human population maybe down to 100,000, and now you start working on cleaning nature up. Uh, but whatever. There's lots of ways to do it. I don't see any point in getting into all that crap. But, yeah, we landed on the moon. We can do it. Not a problem. Uh, uh, and uh, so it's just, it's just all bullshit. It's just a matter of whether it's a priority or not. It's that simple. If we want to do it, we'll do it. If we don't, we won't. <laughs> you know, but it's not a can or cannot issue. <sighs> Shit. And the fact that we can, again, these people keep talking like it's all inconceivable. Well, obviously, I found it quite conceivable. And I found it quite conceivable from a very early age. I mean, if I would have met an antinatalist at six years old, and he would have said, well, you know, this whole Darwin evolution thing, life is all kind of futile, we're all just worming through this shit, your perception of your parents being, you know, completely caught up in bullshit is correct. Yeah, there's no Santa Claus, there's no Easter rabbit, they all lie all the time, they're all making up shit to try to make this thing livable, and it is all just bullshit. I would have said, holy fuck, somebody finally is speaking sense. That makes sense. That's what I'd be saying. Yeah, I mean, I thought something was wrong here. Thank you for explaining it to me. Uh, thank you for the honest description of reality. So it's not like this is uh, way, 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 it's not like it's really complicated. No, it's really simple. And the only thing in its way is the bullshit in your brains, okay? Your optimism is the problem. Your contrivance, your focusing, your gluing yourself to the part of the movie, the little part where the little chasey game happens and the guy wins the big prize, you know, wins the Super Bowl or whatever the bullshit is. You're just so, so focused on goal acquisition and you're completely, you've never spent any time uh, defining goals, um, establishing, you know, critiquing goals, uh, figuring out what goals are worth having and which ones are shit. And that's the real game. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, how to get there is one thing, but defining the there is kind of even more important. And, uh, so, you know, you're just all, the human race is just caught up in the momentum, the pop culture momentum. And you see it all the time. It's like now we're going to, you know, there's this little hurricane-y thing, you know, huffing and puffing down in Florida. And it's just a standard hurricane, Category 3, no big fucking shakes. But because it's been a little while since one crashed into us... Um, you know, everybody's, you know, the media's got everybody stirred up, like, it's the biggest disaster since disaster ever was invented. 
And yeah, well, it could be. With each hurricane, there's a chance of that. So they can, so they can sort of pretend they're being honest. But the truth is, it'll likely do the same thing all the other hurricanes do, which is if it goes inland, it'll run out of gas. And if it stays out to sea, it'll end up too far away to do much damage. But, you know, there's that middle, you know, once in a whatever, 100 or 200 times, where, uh, yeah, it wiggles just right and it nails you with a little extra. So, yeah, it could. But it's no more could than any other hurricane. Now that I've said that, it'll probably be the worst hurricane ever. <laughs> but whatever. Um, it is just the idea, though, that you can, you can just get people all stirred up. All stirred up. I mean, they did it all winter with snowstorms this year. It was incredible. You know, they kept promising, you know, 400 feet of snow. And you'd end up with four inches of snow. But anyway, I mean, a couple of times it came true. But, you know, most of the time they were just hype. Anyway, I'm just missing my own point here. Which is that people live for this propaganda. Uh, they want to hear... And that's, again, why don't I just stop right there? They want, and that's what's dictating what's being said. <laughs> they don't want to hear life is duty. They want to hear they're special, and they're so unique and especially special, and they're cool and neato. And even though you look like shit and you smell like a pig, now you're special. You got a great personality. You're especially special. You're humanly special. Uh, you know, so yeah, you know, just blow the smoke and uh, they'll eat it up. And that's the game. And sad and pitiful and embarrassing and humiliating. I mean, it is. I mean, as a human being, I'm humiliated by the tripe and the bullshit and the nonsense the human race gets caught up in. You know, yuck. Yeah, we've got this whole 9-11 anniversary coming. And you're just like, what is this shit? Do people understand what the fuck happened here? <laughs> you know, I mean, hell. We had a day from hell caused by our own, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, what, what goes around comes around kind of thing. Uh, we had earned that punch, that kick in the balls, and we got it. Uh, people died horrifically and tragically, and here we are 10 years later, and then we had, you know, 10 years of shit war, absolute crap, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people ruined over it, uh, knocked whole countries into the dark ages, um, and what now, we're going to eat some cake and celebrate something? Uh, just uh, dismal, <sighs> disgusting. Uh, that's human beings. Human beings. Yuck! I just hate being among them. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Oof. Nasty creature. So, yeah, not much to say, I guess. I mean, there's a lot to say, but nothing. You can't say it. These people don't want to hear it. So, but, you know, got to keep plugging away, I suppose. But the bottom line is, is the truth is simple. And the only problem is, is people have barriers up to it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know the context. They want to just edit the nasty bits out of their um, comprehension so they can justify the party and the celebration and, well, even the ignorance and the recklessness that that allows. They want to be ignorant, so they have an excuse uh, to keep, uh, you know, rolling risk dice uh, and messing, messing around, fucking around, acting like kids. They don't want to grow up and smell the duty and take account for it. I guess that's part of it too. They don't want the taint of reality on their uh, the little 
fantasy they roll in their head about what they're doing and what they're part of. They don't want to think they're, oh, I'm part of an infestation on planet Earth, a four billion year old infestation that's, um, you know, basically now just living on the dead. We pour the dead into our car and drive around. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is zombie land all over the place. It really is. It's a zombie life and zombie world because the DNA is zombie, eh? It's zomb, or whatever, you get my point. <laughs> yeah, zombie DNA. Um, yeah, you just keep putting all the little dead parts back together again and forcing them to hop around and scootle through the dead humus to eke out a dinner in a fuckable and uh, get once again squashed back into the mush. And uh, yeah, but no brains to be had. None in real use. You know, they're just there for show. It's all show brains. <laughs> yeah, no go. No go brains, just show brains. So, anyway. That shall be enough, I presume. Kind of a nice, it's, you know, overcast and very wet. But, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I think they turned the pool heater on. <laughs> so I ain't gonna complain, right? Yeah. So anyway, until next time. And such.